Hey, everybody. I am Jay Heilman, host of Kingdom Builder TV, and I'm here live today. And my guest probably doesn't need a, any kind of introduction. You've seen him in a lot of movies and films over the years, including Major League and uh, a little show called L.A. Law back in the day. I've got Corbin Burnson with me today. Corbin, how are you doing today, man? Wonderful, wonderful. I apologize about the lighting. I'm not a DP, so I don't, uh, I get these like, I'm, you know, I wish I could make it look good. You look great. Me, I'm, I'm, anyway, thank you. Good to be here. Oh, thank you for joining us today. I greatly appreciate it. Well, I actually got a chance to check out a Pure Flix series that you just did um, called Journey of Faith. And the cool thing about this is, Corbin, is I actually talked to you back in 2010 regarding the project that this docu-series that you did uh, revolves around. And it's kind of, I consider it my kind of a full circle moment. Uh, was You were one of the first interviews that I actually ever did back then. And I've done many, many, many since then. I think I've gotten a little better at the, at the interview process. But this uh, takes us back to Rust, which was, of course, a movie that you did with the small town of Kipling in Saskatchewan, Canada, uh, back in. Now, the one thing I was, uh, the one thing that the docuseries didn't say is when you originally filmed this movie. I know it came out in 2010, but when did you actually film this movie? Uh, we filmed it in 2010, that's 13. I'm going to say like two, like not 2000, somewhere, somewhere around there. I, I wow, it's funny. I, it's hits me. It's like, 2006. I stumped you. You okay. stumped me because I don't know if it was before. It was after I started Psych, which was 2006. So 2007, 2008, maybe, because I always think of it as 16 okay. years ago. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so for people who have seen Rust, uh, this this uh, th this docuseries, Journey of Faith, kind of takes you behind the scenes. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this uh, Journey of Faith series that you have that's out on Pure Flix now? Um, so I, 16 odd years ago, I, I, a little bit longer, my father passed away and I, uh, you know, I'm in my middle of my life. You can call it midlife, not really in a crisis, but I see a lot of friends around me, you know, families falling apart, guys, people drifting from their marriages for whatever reason. Um, my father passes and for the first time in my life, I'm really like, oh, wow. Okay. This thing's real. You know, I had friends who pass away and all that and. You know, it's not like I didn't know death existed, but your father hits you and you're like, the next in line, it's real, it's in your family, you're on your way. And it was a bit of an awakening. Um, at the same time, I through other circumstances, which you're going to learn about in the in the series, I don't want to take up too much time, uh, um, about a thing called One Red Paperclip that got me to this small town in Canada. I met this incredible group of people, 1,100 people in Kipling, Saskatchewan, and I auditioned them to be in a movie that I was going to make. Uh, I wanted real people. And I can't, the people were so incredible. I thought, well, I don't want just one person for this role. I want, I want to do a movie with all of you. And my father passed away and I wrote this movie called Rust, which is about midlife crisis. Of, you know, in this case, it was a pastor who lost his way and with, you know, God, if you will, and broke up. And, um, he um, he goes to this small town and he uh, re, re rediscovers his his he rediscovers his faith and rekindles his relationship with his father. So I satisfied a lot of things because it was a real town and real people, and they funded the film. We had the good sense to film it all. We didn't know what we were going to do with it. We just filmed it all. Usually, you do some behind the scenes for whatever reason, whatever we were being guided. We filmed all of it, the audition process is everything. And cut to, you know, 13 years later and COVID's around and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and my producing partner said, we just, you know, we got to like edit this footage into something. And he had the time and he created the making of Rust, which turned out to be a reawakening of my faith, if you will. It was my journey of faith. Um, I had had faith let's call it loosely all my life. It wasn't that, I, you know, I didn't have faith. It wasn't that I went right. from zero to 60, uh, but I was awakened, you know, I was awakened and I started looking at the world differently. I look at the world the way it is right now. Um, and, um, and this is the journey of coming to that place in my life, which I've been now for since then, really for, you know, 10, 10, 10 more years or, 13 years, um, somebody who's just more awakened to the world and my faith and the good, bad, and the ugly. 
Right. And, you know, it, it's it's funny because when we were when I was offered this interview with you, um, I actually didn't know that it was for this particular series at first. And I remember meeting you in Orlando, Florida in September of 2010 to talk about Rust. And I remember, uh, you know, prior to that, we had a phone conversation. I think I had 15 minutes with you on the phone and I try to stick to my time allotment when I do interviews and stuff. But you and I ended up staying on that phone call for over an hour because um, I guess you felt comfortable enough with me that you were asking me questions about church, about the Bible, about about my own personal faith. Right. And um, you had quoted in both of these interviews that at that time, this was the journey that God had you on. And right. you were kind of like you said, you were kind of new in your faith and like rekindling that, uh, you know, that real faith in your life. And I thought that was cool because then over the years and stuff, I had seen uh, the projects that you had coming out. Um, like over the years, you had, uh, you know, Christian Mingle in 2015. You had Beyond the Heavens in 2013 leading up to what you're doing now. And uh, back more recently, you were in uh, The Left Behind, uh, Rise of the Antichrist that just came out uh, here recently, which was a great movie. And um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, and I remember back the conversations I had. I'm like, you know what? I, you know, I had prayed for Corbin back then and I just, it's, it's amazing to see this whole thing come full circle for me personally, because, you know, I talked to you back then and here we are talking today about that journey. So uh, would you, would, would you would, uh, say it's safe to say that, that God still has you on the journey? Oh, the, the God's had me in the journey from the beginning. He didn't start, yes. you know, from before I was me. You know, I've been, it, it, it's been his journey for me. Uh, and uh, yes, very much so. What's interesting today, and, you know, to me, it's a constant exploration. One of my least favorite things is to meet somebody who says, I've got my faith, I found God, I found Jesus, and I'm done. It's like, well, what? No, that's not the way it works. Your path mm -hmm. is going on, you know, it's going to go on and on and on. And, you know, I, I, it's, I'm, I'm not really good with anybody who's arrogant about anything that, you know, oh, I found it. I know it. I know better than you. I know that I, I'm just, I, I, I just shy away from arrogance in that way. And I think meet a lot of people in the world of faith and religion who are arrogant about their faith, you know, um, yeah. I found God, you need to find God. Um, um, anyway, uh, I digress. Uh, I, today, struggling, I'll use the word, because there's a something and you'll see it in the in the in the in the journey of faith i'm not i'm not what you would call typically your christian i don't know i don't want i don't want i'm i don't fit into the mold of if you're this you're that you're that that i don't want my films to fit in there i feel like god's purpose for me my journey and continues very much so to this interview how interesting that this took a little loop back to our journey um mm -hmm. it's been to reach people who might not know or understand people of faith not even know god that's not my i don't god and other people can take care of that and people coming around to your house with bibles in their hand they can i'm not going to do that i'm going to constantly be the person who is not afraid to say i love god i love jesus um, and Jesus was a major influence in my life and always has been via my mother before, you know, before I made my ever made my first Christian film when I was a little kid. Amen. Um, and though it was not structured, even though I did some Sunday school, it wasn't Bible related in this for and be a good boy. You're going to heaven. It wasn't or be a bad boy and you're going to hell. I wasn't in that mold. I was right. just this is a righteous thing to do and be and. This is a way to treat somebody, and this is not a way to treat somebody. And my mother would bring in so many people at Thanksgiving into our home, and I realized that that's and she then she'd go off and drink a fifth of vodka. So, you know, she was real. She was real when when Christ infused her with the principles of being. Um, she lived that life, but it doesn't mean she didn't didn't have these other problems, these other things. Right. And I want. I want to relate to people who don't go to church every Sunday, who've never read a Bible, who've never, you know, I had a good friend. I tell this story often. And for some of your listeners, it might be, you know, 
redundant. Um, I had a friend who's an atheist, very smart people, atheists, very, that's why they're, you know, mm -hmm. they can't figure it out. It's, it's, it's like, I don't trust the magic trick, you know, um, and they think it's all smoke and mirrors uh, because they don't have faith and faith is what it takes to understand and know God. Um, right. Uh, it, they work on fact, you know, hard fact, scientific fact, if you will. Anyway, I had a good friend, atheist, very smart guy, wonderful guy, nice guy, loving guy, family guy, all that stuff. Had his first child. When he had his first child, he said to me one day, he said, what's with you making these faith-based movies, man? What are you doing? What's going on with you? Like, oh, looking for Christ, looking for Jesus, you become a Jesus freak? I said, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. I said, I've always known Jesus. I was brought up that way. My mother, you know, had a love-hate relationship with Jesus as mighty as any love-hate relationship there's ever been. So I was aware of Jesus. Um, and he, I said, so if you want to understand me, think of it this way. You saw your child when he was born, your first child, right? He, I said, yeah. He said, were you in the room? I said, I mean, you were there. You watched him come from your wife into this world and take that first breath and that cry and that and the first, you know, that first whimper of life. And he said, yeah. He said, and why? He goes, well, obviously, just the most incredible, wonderful. I said, take that feeling, and I'm going to call that God. That's when you want to know when I talk about God, I talk about that feeling. Now, I might get it looking at a pine tree or a sunset or all the beautiful things you do or a fine wine. I don't know. I go, mm, I go, great, Scott. You know, to me, the feeling that you get when you do that is how I want you to understand the way I view and experience God, not as God, hmm, I'm going to give this one hell today. I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. that's not how I view God. It's not how I view heaven. It's not how I view hell. You know, it is, you create hell. If you living a life that's far away from you, you just, I see it. I, there's a guy we're working with right now. He's working on a house that we're remodeling and he's tormented, man. Tormented. He's already in hell. I don't know what he did or where he's from, or what's his past is, but I look at him and I, he's so beyond help that I can't even call it out. Like, hey man, do you kind of give me a hug? He's like, he's like, you know, and I just, I don't know. I told this friend anyway, and this atheist friend says, well, if that's how you talk about God, I said, well, yeah. And I said, well, if, yeah, that's it. You know, so he got it. He understood me. I want to, I don't want people to understand me. I can give a flying crap if people understand me or want to right. understand or like me or any of that stuff. But I'm going to show love and I'm going to try as much as I can to illuminate the wonderful gift of this human experience mm -hmm. and, you know, bring light to where there is dark, you know. If it's through films, to if it's through light, to my films are, are about awareness. You know, I think as much as my films are about my films, I think it's about like, wow, Corbin Burns, weren't you like the guy making out with all the chicks on Major League? And how'd your wife go? I go like, well, yes, I was that guy. By the way, that guy, all of my characters are infused with the knowledge that I have. And that's why, you know, you take Arnie Becker from LA Law, you take Roger Dorn. People liked the guys because they knew they weren't arrogant. They weren't arrogant guys like I know, and I, they weren't bad. They they knew, they they know what I know in my heart, and they can't find it. So, right. I think that, you know, you you see people like that in life that are like the guy that I just talked about who's dark. It's like I don't know if I can play. It. He's well, I as a human being as an actor, I know there's hurt somewhere in there, you know. So. I love him all the same, and I wish that his her art didn't hurt the way it hurts. And, but I'm not gonna be able to break through. Do I can't spend my, you know, I can walk in and go, hi, oh wow, what lovely work you're doing, you know, and what a beautiful day. Not raining. Those are the type of people that you just. You, those are the type of people you just have to pray for because you know I come across people like that in in my life as well, and it's like you feel that all hope is lost, but then you realize that you serve a God who's much bigger than that. And you just got to pray about it. You just got to pray for right. them. And 
you know, when I was telling people that were that I was doing this interview, you know, kind of touching uh, on your path, the picture with the movies and stuff. Uh, obviously, the I was introduced to you uh, through Major League. I was not quite nine years old when that movie came out, but um, I'm shocked that my mother let me watch the movie. But I go back and watch all three of those movies uh, from time to time, and they still offer me uh, a lot of uh, comedy relief, um, especially your character as it evolved throughout the second, third movie. Um, Roger Dorn was just a funny character. I mean, at the very beginning of Major League, he was like, okay, well, he's that guy that you that you want to hate. But then when you get to know him and then you see him throughout the movie, uh, it's awesome. In fact, I still have, uh, when I met you in 2010, I still have the Roger Dorn baseball here that you signed for me. And, um, you know, well, I, I, between that something? movie... Can I say something interesting about that movie? Real yeah. quick, I don't to jump in on your thing. I mean, here we go. See the hour. You no, go ahead. Keep, um, is you saw that, and I'm not sure how you were raised, but you were nine years old. The F-bomb is dropped 17 times in major. It's an R-rated movie. People let yep. their children, their sons, and I'm going to call it sons. I mean, you know, they let their kids see that movie. Young kids. Now, I'm going to call that a Christian movie because what is it doing? It's showing people in, in, in it that are, that are vain and it's showing money and it's greed and all that. And it's saying, but if we work together as a team and recognize the beauty of one another, we can succeed. To me, that's a faith-based film. You know, all good films are, I would argue, uh, I'd have to look in there. All tremendous films to me are faith-based films. I don't care how many times you say the F word, the C word, the, you show this rape, you do drugs on camera, all that. If the transition of it is that we see the character or characters or the story about the human heart is this gift of God, then I can sit back and I want to be the guy who goes, I can do that movie. You know, a lot of actors, Kirk Cameron won't kiss other women and all that's all fine. That's that to me is just making media for that audience. It's it's you know, it's it's right. making it's just you know, you know, making movies that are just easily okay. I I would rather be involved in things that show like in major league, where it just seems like a comedy, right? Just a comedy F bomb 17 times. And people you saw it at nine years old, Christian. You know, and why? Because people went, these are good people. These are good and decent people. These are people who are flawed, who are good and decent. They don't have to find God. I would argue God found them and starts to work through them. They don't mm -hmm. have to go, I found right. Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I can, now we're going to win the World Series because that ain't how life works. If you think you're going to go find right. God and fall to your knees and go, praise Jesus, and your child's coming back, and that might not happen. You're setting yourself up. But if you just accept God all the time, accept the beauty, look at the beauty, love one another, you live a God-like place and you'll, you know, you'll understand forgiveness and gratitude and mercy and all the other things, you know. So exactly. You know, funny, I have to bring that up about Major League. I use that as an example often, like a good story about humanity is to me, it's a faith-based movie. Yeah, and I, I I still go back and watch it. It's 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 a it's a hilarious movie, and you know I know we got a couple more minutes here. Uh, you know I was telling people that I was doing the interview with you today, and of course the the two TV series that they remember you for the most are L.A. Law and Psych, mm -hmm. and um, two great series by the way. I watched L.A. Law when I was younger with my mom. Uh, my mom had a good taste in series. Watch MacGyver, uh, Murder, She Wrote, all those series back in the 80s and early 90s. Great series and stuff. And they, they don't seem to make TV shows like they used to. But there are some good TV shows today. Now, looking back on your career, um, you know, what it, in closing here, what would you say that your greatest accomplishment would be as far as your career goes uh, in both movies and film? If you, if you could go back and tell your younger self, something now maybe that that you know now that you didn't know then um what would that be and you know what would you think that your greatest accomplishment in the all the time that you've been in film 
what well, would that be? One thing I, I would go back, I mean, that's really two very different questions. What would I go back and tell my younger self? I'd go back and say, don't listen to some people who tell you this is the career path you have to follow when, in fact, your heart path tells you. There was a great film. I'm not going to bring up the films because I don't want to diss anyone out. But there was a film right out of L.A. Law. And I pretty much, I was a, you know, I could have made the George Clooney, Bruce Willis move. You know, I could have, L.A. Law was big. I was a big character. I was, I was like a hot shot in the day, right? And there was a movie I really wanted to do that I thought was cool and more more artful. And there was another one that all oh, my reps are, you got to do this because the people involved in this and that. And I thought like, no, that's that's the movie I want to do. That one over there, not that one. They talked me into, you know, I, I got to listen to the people who represent me or why am I paying them? And went for that one. And so, and it was more about money and it was about strategy. And here's the thing about the path. The path isn't doesn't take strategy. The path takes your heart being open and observation and looking. If you, you know, if I go five minutes down the path and then I make a left and I come backwards for a half a day and then I go forward for you're you're just gonna confuse yourself. Just get on the path and go. Follow it. Stumble. Get up. Have faith. Get up. Keep moving. Um, we all stumble on the path. We all stumble. It, it, the path wouldn't be the path without stumbling. It wouldn't have its value. It'd just be a, a you know, a slippery slope without anything. Um, stumbling is what makes life. It makes art. It makes all the wonderful things. Um, so I would tell myself to stay on the path, follow my heart, however you want to put that. Don't really think about planning things too much. I'm um, sorry. Uh, I've got to turn that off. Uh, and the... You asked about the other. What, there was another question within there about what my. Um, yeah. What, what would, would you? What in closing? In closing, what would you say your greatest accomplishment over your film career would, would be? I'm, you know, I there, there's a this. I get this question at various times. And it's always about the thing that I just did. If the thing I just did really makes the most sense, and this journey of faith is is an accomplishment because it. It, I didn't really do it. We filmed it, but it's an accomplishment. I really love Rust. Rust is a, it was an important moment in my life. You know, LA Law was great. It opened mm -hmm. the gate. It's, I'll never, I always, people say, what's your favorite role? I go, I can't tell you my favorite. I can tell you ones that are most impactful. LA Law, it opened up the gate. Um, uh, psych, sure, it's great because, you know, it was on for eight years and financially I could take care of my kids and my family and all those kinds of things. And it was a lot of fun and good and decent fun with good and decent people. Um, but as far as accomplishments, there's something about that what I did with Rust, because I often sit and say to myself, man, I'm just not like cool. Some of the cool people, the cool directors, the cool actors that are, they're cool, this and that. And I go, oh, well, no, Rust was pretty cool. It was, it was weird, man. It was, it was original. It was, you didn't, there was not a lot of thought in it. It was original because there wasn't a lot of thought in it. Sure, we had to organize putting the movie together, but just to keep going and doing it and the fact that we filmed it and then we made this thing. And then 16 years later, my producing partner puts it together and I look at it and go, wow, that's me. Um, I can't take mm -hmm. credit for what he did putting it together, but I can take credit for saying, I'm okay with me. I'm okay with my life. I'm okay with what I've done, you know, and not be in this thing that happens to actors. Like, why aren't I as big as him? Why aren't I that? Why aren't I this? Why aren't I, why aren't I starring in this series? Why aren't I, you know, you know <laughs> why aren't I an action star that no longer is an action star because I'm too old, which is great, man. I, the good mm -hmm. news is I didn't have to become something and now I'm on the downside. I'm still, the, the good news for me is like, I still feel like I'm on the upside. I'm on the upswing. Other people are like, yeah, they did that. Now they're doing TV, are they? Uh, me, I'm like, I all I got is up, man. All I got is up. You know, I haven't slid back down. Well, well, I'll tell you what the the series Journey of Faith is available exclusively on Pure Flix, and uh, you know, I loved Rust. I love being able to go back and, and like kind of look at the behind the scenes of this and how it affected you personally. Um, so I would suggest everybody watching in now. If you haven't seen Rust, check out Rust. 
product and then no, check out check the out, series or uh, no journey check out the series i'd go the other way around do the journey okay do the journey the of faith first, Russ. oh wait oh that's interesting i never thought about that do you oh no because then you've seen the movie so you're informed what those moments are yeah you might be right i never thought about that good you're right i've always well, either way it's a great it's a great all film. of it well, I've always promoted watch the series and then go watch Rust and you'll see what actually happened. But I like your way, man. I'll shut up. See, I would see, see both of them. It's, well, I greatly appreciate you joining me today. It's been a pleasure to be able to catch up with you again. And uh, if you're ever here in Central Florida, we'll have to go catch a baseball game. Nothing like seeing a baseball game with Roger Dorn himself. So, Corbin, yeah. thank you so much. Appreciate all these projects that you have. And Journey of Faith is available now to stream on pureflix.com or the app. So go check that out. Corbin, thank you so much for joining us today. I greatly appreciate it, man. Thank you. Do we need a full hour or no? <laughs> I'll give her my phone number. You can call me back anytime you want, man. We'll just talk about life. Love to love okay, chatting brother. with you, brother. All right, man. Take care. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.